There was much discussion uh, during the 2016 election and since the 2016 election about fake news. And fake news are stories that are completely fabricated with no verifiable facts, sources, or quotes. But fake news is only one of the ways that political misinformation can deceive or mislead. And if you're only looking for fake news, you might, be able, you might fall victim to other strategies that are intended to deceive you. So it's important to be able to recognize each of these strategies and know what you can do to avoid falling for it. In this segment, I will help you identify several types of inaccurate or misleading information and give you some tips on how you can tell if that information is truthful or not. And we're going to be working from this typology of seven different types of inaccurate information. And this is a typology that was developed by First Draft News, which is an organization that helps people sift through fact and fiction in the digital media environment. And the graph we're looking at here was created by the library here at the University of Michigan. And we're looking at seven different types of inaccurate information, and we're going to talk through each of these in this segment. If we're moving from sort of left to right, you can think of these different types of inaccurate information on this typology in their differences in their intention to deceive. So the types of inaccurate information on the left have a lower intention to deceive, whereas the strategies on the right have a greater intention to deceive. Okay, and each of these strategies differ in their intentions or goals. Some of them are to parody. Some of them are to put forth propaganda or facilitate partisan goals. And we'll talk about each of those at, uh, uh, along the way. Uh, but the main thing here is that it's important to distinguish each of these different types of inaccurate information so you can better recognize them and spot them when you see them in your newsfeed. So the first type of inaccurate information is what we call satire or parody. And many of us have seen uh, satirical content uh, in social media. And the point of satire is to highlight ridiculousness. Uh, oftentimes satire can hold people accountable. Uh, it can attack people in power or pass judgment on politicians. And the intention here is really to be funny. So we know about sites like The Onion. Uh, this is a widely circulated uh, form of satire or political parody. Um, it's often outrageous, and it, it certainly has the potential to mislead, but the, the intention here is really to be funny, right? Uh, and one way to sort of identify satire is look at a headline and say to yourself, okay, is that, is that really something that could have could have happened. Is that so outrageous? So here are two examples uh, from The Onion. One, we have uh, an example where Trump is sitting down beside the fire with a quill and ink, you know, for an evening of writing out tweets, okay? And, and on, on the other side, we have one where a blindfolded Hillary Clinton asks her debate coaches to attack her with talking points from all sides. Both of these stories are false, but really their, their intention is not to deceive, but rather to be funny. The second type of inaccurate information uh, is more about a misleading headline or visual. We see this all the time in social media. Um, and the problem here is that the headlines or the pictures or the captions uh, don't match the content of the article if you click through. Uh, and this is what's often called clickbait. And clickbait is sensational or misleading headlines uh, that are intended to get people to click on the story. And the purpose is really to get people to uh, click on the story or the headline in order to generate ad revenue. Okay, so the, re the way they do that, again, is through an often uh, sensational or, or outrageous headline that doesn't really match what's going on in the article. We see this all the time in lists uh, like top 10 reasons uh, for X, Y, or Z, or you won't believe what happens next. And oftentimes, as we see in this example, there's a use of all caps, right, saying that election polls are rigged. And if you click on an article, the, the content of the article, again, has very little to do with the headline. One way you want to think about identifying this type of misleading headline or visual is to look for some of these keywords or these all caps, right? So again, going back to this idea of top 10 reasons for X, Y, or Z, or, or you won't believe what happens, these are often very good signs that the text is going to be different from this very misleading headline or visual. The third type of inaccurate content is what we call misleading content, okay? And misleading content uses information to frame uh, a particular issue or frame a particular individual. Uh, this is an example where factcheck.org, which is a fact-checking organization, has fact-checked two comments made by President Trump and Vice President Pence related to Hillary Clinton's emails. 
Okay, and they fact check these because the comments made by Trump and Pence in this example are misleading. So if you if you read the text here, Trump portrayed Clinton in terms of the email situation, the email scandal, saying that Clinton and her team, quote unquote, acid washed emails. That sounds like they poured some chemicals on the emails. But what the Clinton team really did was use a software called Bleachbit. Uh, and acid washing sounds much more ominous. So it's, it's providing a little bit of misleading content to what really happened. In the second line of text, you'll see that Mike Pence claimed that the FBI found 15,000 more emails detailing national security. But here, as factcheck.org points out, the FBI recovered 14,900 emails, but only three contained classified information. So the statements here are quite misleading and don't necessarily provide a full context of what's happening, right? Uh, and one way to think about this or one way to, to identify misleading content is to go to fact check, uh, fact checking organizations like factcheck.org or PolitiFact, because what these organizations do really well is they provide you with much more nuance and context to a given, uh, a given quote by a politician or a given statement by a politician. The fourth type of inaccurate information is what we call the wrong context. And this is often where we might see a picture or a quote by a politician that was a real picture or quote, but it was taken out of context. And in this example, this is a picture of dozens of buses that was taken in Austin, Texas, around or in the vicinity of an anti-Trump protest that took place in Austin, Texas. An individual saw these buses, assumed that the buses contained paid protesters, people who were paid to come to Austin to protest this Trump rally. This is what this gentleman believed and posted this to social media. When in fact, these buses were just typical coach buses. They had nothing to do with any individuals who were protesting any Trump rallies, but it made it seem like these individuals were bussed in to protest the rally. Okay, and again, it's, a, it's an accurate picture, but uh, the context is off, okay? The fifth type of content is what we call real news imposters. And this is when news sites or fake news sites online or in social media try to fool people by resembling real news sites. And this is a very prominent example. On the left, we have the real news site, abcnews.com, which we're all familiar with. And on the right, we have the fake news site, which was abcnews.com.co. And I've identified a few different things here that help illustrate how the fake news site on the right is trying to resemble the real news site. So for example, if you look at the logos, the logo on the fake news site is very similar, sli slightly different, but very similar. And just in a passing glance, you might assume that it was ABC News, but it's not, right? You also see, as I've pointed out too, that the URLs or the letters that you type into the box at the top of the website or web browser are very, very similar. The fake news site just added .co. So if you're not paying very close attention to the URL, you might assume that you're actually looking at abcnews.com. And the problem with that is that if people think that they're getting news from abcnews.com, which is a legitimate news source, they're more likely to believe it. So uh, this is one of the tricks that fake news sites use to fool you into thinking that you're consuming or looking at legitimate news sources. The sixth type of inaccurate information is what we call manipulated content. And we see this all the time with photos or quotes or captions that are manipulated in some way to distort the truth. If you're thinking about photographs, this is a very easy thing for people to do. People with Photoshop are able to impose or change images to make them look different than the actual image. So this is one that was circulating during the election. Uh, on the right, we see the real photograph, which is a photograph of Donald Trump and his parents. And on the left, we see an image that was doctored or manipulated. And in this image, it made it appear as though Trump's parents were wearing robes of the Ku Klux Klan. And this was used as a political strategy to try to delegitimize uh, Trump. And this was, a, this was a picture that circulated widely uh, on social media. And again, it, as you can tell, it's very easy to manipulate the content in this way. One of the ways you can see if the picture or quote that you're looking at is real is, is of course, Google it or reverse image search. And that will show you where the actual image came from. And it'll show you, for example, the picture on the right. The final type of inaccurate content is what we call fabricated content. And this is where we're really getting at uh, the idea of fake news. This is completely made up information. Okay, so the sources, the quotes, the headlines, everything in these quote unquote articles is completely made up. 
And here are two examples that were very widely shared during the 2016 election. On the left, we have the article that suggests that Pope Francis endorsed Donald Trump for president and released a statement in support of President Trump's uh, candidacy. This, of course, was not true. The Pope did not endorse any candidate for the presidential election. But this was, again, an article that was shared several hundred thousand times on social media. On the right, we see another article suggesting that President Obama, when he was still in office, signed an executive order banning the Pledge of Allegiance in schools nationwide. Again, this is completely fabricated, completely made up. And part of the reason why this fake news is created, number one, there is money to be made in fake news. And number two, you could see how this could be a political strategy. People might want or think that it's a great thing that the Pope is endorsing Donald Trump for presidency, and it might give Trump's uh, candidacy a boost. Whereas if Obama is signing an executive order that's banning the Pledge of Allegiance in schools, that might discredit him or change people's opinions or attitudes about the president because they don't agree with this uh, executive order that he signed. So these are the seven types of inaccurate information that I want to talk with you uh, about today. Uh, and I want to conclude this segment by providing a few tips for identifying these, uh, this inaccurate information that I've, that I've mentioned. The first one is to be skeptical uh, and just be aware that many people uh, or many uh, pieces of information are spread online with the intention to deceive people. So if you see something that looks uh, not exactly real, not exactly credible, be skeptical of it. Do a little more research and find out if it's real or not. The second one is read beyond the headline. I talked a little bit earlier about this idea of clickbait. And if you only read the headline, you might fall victim to whatever claim is being made in that headline. But if you click through and read the whole article, uh, you might be able to tell that this is, in fact, not real information. The third is think a little bit more about who created the story and why. What is the source of this information? And why was this information created? Was it used or created for as a form of political strategy? Is someone trying to get ahead, discredit the other side, give their own side a, a boost? Think a little bit more about the source of the information and perhaps why it, was, why it was created. The fourth tip is think about what's missing. So if you read an article, think to yourself, is there another side to this story? What uh, types of information would be needed to make this story complete? Who would this article need to talk to in order to get the other side of the story? So think about whether the story is one-sided and what might, what might actually be missing. The fifth tip is ask yourself, are other people covering this story? So if you see a questionable story, you're not sure if it's real, Google it. See if mainstream media organizations are covering. See if credible uh, news organizations are covering it. And if they're not, that might be a sign that what you're looking at is fake news. And finally, be aware of your biases. We have several biases that lead us to fall for inaccurate information. So ask yourself, uh, am I believing this because of what I believe uh, politically? Am I believing this because I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat? These biases can encourage us uh, to fall for false information. So the more you're aware of the biases and the more you ask yourself, uh, am I just uh, believing this because I think or want it to be true, the better off you will be.